I used to pray to God every single day to kill me, take my life. But now I look at tomorrow with joy. How did that change? So about six years ago, I, I wanted God to end my life. I was suicidal. And every single day, I wanted him to take my life, but I was too scared to kill myself. So I would leave my house in the day and walk to the shop across the street, walk really slowly across a busy road and just imagine getting hit by one of these cars. Every single night time when it was quiet, dark, just by myself, I would pray, God, take my life. I've, I've had enough. But I was too scared to take my own life. I wanted him to do it for me. And I don't, I don't know why I was too scared. Maybe something deep inside me just knew it was wrong. Maybe I didn't want to be the one to cause pain to my family. Maybe I was scared of the, un I don't know. But I wanted God to take my life. So every single day that I woke up was a disappointment that I did. And angry that God didn't listen. But now, how's my life now? I, I look at today and tomorrow, not with misery, but with joy. I look forward to today. I look forward to tomorrow. I can make plans for the next day and rejoice in them. Like now, I live in relationship with Jesus. I'm married. I have two wonderful kids. I run my own business and I preach God's word. And, and so I, I, love, I love my life. <laughs> I love the life that God has given me and I'm thankful for life. And... How, how do I get there? How does that change come about? Well, to understand the change, you need to understand the cause. Why was I suicidal in the first place? So if I think back, I was, I was tired of all the pain. I was constantly living in pain and I'd had enough. Now, you might think that Christians shouldn't be suicidal, that Christians are meant to have faith. Christians are meant to always be happy and all that stuff. And you might even feel guilty if you are a Christian and you've experienced suicidal thoughts before. But it, it was actually because I, I wanted Christ, like I wanted to be with Christ. That's why I felt that way. Like I, I was done with the pain. People that I loved were dying constantly around me, friends, family, all sorts dying around me. And I'm constantly experiencing that grief. Living in sin left me in depression. I felt so ashamed of myself and I hated my life. And then I read the Bible and I see Psalm 16 verse 11. That verse, it says, in your presence is the fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So I'm like, cool, I, I wanna be there. I don't wanna continue in this pain. I wanna be there where there's joy, where there's pleasure. I, I want all of this to end, so God, take me. And so I'm constantly angry at him because he's not listening. But how did that change? to now where I thank God for life. I don't regret that he's given it to me. So, so God showed me something. God showed me something. He showed me how to suffer well and how to hold on. If you read Hebrews 12 verses one and two, it says that we should look to Jesus who is the founder and perfecter of our faith, who endured the shame of the cross because of the joy set before him. So because of, of the joy that he had, knowing what his death was going to accomplish, he was able to endure all of that pain. So just imagine the scene. Jesus is in the garden the day before he knows he, what's about to happen. Only he knows. His disciples are sleeping. One of his disciples has betrayed him and he's anxious saying, God, take if it's your will, take this cup from me, but your will be done, not mine. The, imagine the anxiety that he felt. No doubt he wanted to escape the pain. And then he continues and he goes, he's beaten by the Pharisees and the priests. He has to hold his own cross. He's whipped, he's bruised. He's got a crown of thorns placed on his head. He's bleeding from his skull. And then he's lifted up on this cross where he can barely breathe. And the nails, he has to use the nails driven through his ankles to push himself up to breathe. And he could have at any moment come down. He could have at any moment ended the pain. But because of the joy of knowing what his salvation would accomplish for you, for me, if we believe, because of that joy, he endured. He did his thing. He held on. And then once he died and risen again, he receives a crown. 
he's seated at the right hand of the father and this is what god showed me the crown will come but now it's time to run the race there will be a time where he will end the pain where there will be no weeping no sadness no anxiety that time is coming for you but right now is a time to run the race and so if you will trust in jesus and believe in him your sins will be cleansed forgiven you'll have a hope in heaven laid up for you and in the meantime god will use the difficult things you go through in life to build you up. James 1, 2 says, count it joy when you face trials of many kinds because the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, steadfastness so that we would be immovable. God is using your pain. And this is what God showed me that he was using mine. And if I hadn't held on, my best friend wouldn't have got saved. If I hadn't held on, my children wouldn't have a dad. They wouldn't know how to pray in their youth. If I hadn't held on, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have a business. If I hadn't held on, I wouldn't have this ministry. If I hadn't held on, these things wouldn't have happened. But for the joy that God showed me that the crown is coming, but now it's time to run the race, I held on. And I want you to know that too. I want you to know that you need to hold on. Hold on to Jesus. Look to Jesus and hold on. And get yourself around people that will help you hold on when you feel like letting go because we can't do this alone but I want my testimony to encourage you that yes there is weeping in the night but joy really does come in the morning if we'll hold on to Christ peace and blessings my G